Hello, I'm Pippa Monique and I'm here with Unicorn Darts for the For Every Player series and I'm joined by none other than Ian Diamond White. Ta da! Hi. <laughs> love the reveal, I love that. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm Good fine. to see you. Yeah. And how have you found 2022 so far? Hey, it's a struggle at the moment. Um, we're just getting back into the, the darts and you know, it's just starting to get more uh, weekends and stuff due to Covid and mm. stuff like that. So, but yeah, exhibitions are coming back now. We're starting to go out and enjoy it and yeah. meet the crowd and the people again. And, and that's what we want to do. Got to love a good crowd as well. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Tell us a bit about how you got into your, like how your journey started. How did you become a professional player? I, I used to go to the pub on a Sunday afternoon with one of my friends and he was playing in a local league, mm. but I never, you know, cause I was more into my motorbikes. I had, a, I had hair down to here. No I had, way. Uh, yeah. I had all the studded belts, the guns and roses and yeah. everything. And, and that's what I was into, and I wasn't interested in darts. And I used to just keep beating them, and they, they said sign up, and, and went from there. And I just signed local league and worked my way up. Wow! So it all just started from that Sunday afternoon. Sunday the afternoon wow. on the bitter. <laughs> <laughs> now, where did the nickname come from then, Ian? Well, where? Yeah, I, I used to go out with a girl who, who lived in a pub. Yeah. You know, they owned a pub and everything. And uh, that's when the diamond white cider came out. Oh! Ah, what are you thinking, so? And that's how it came out, and I said, that'd be a good nickname, yeah. that. Um, but at the time, there was a guy who was playing darts, mm -hmm. and his name was uh, Diamond Dave Askew. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, can you have two? But technically, there's about two or three different names yeah. that people have, don't they? So, yeah, and it's that's not entirely I the same, so. No. Now, who's your role model, not just from the world of darts in general? Like, do you have a role model? Um, I don't have role models. When I was, when I was playing darts and practicing um, before I even played as a professional, uh, I used to practice in the pub and I'd, w I'd be watching the World Championships mm. and you Phil Taylor and Dennis Priestley were playing and whatever Phil was going up and hitting, I'd try and beat it. Yeah. And he'd be on the TV and I'm in the local pub <laughs> just, you know, practicing and that's, that's how I, I, I just started enjoying it and I still enjoy it now. Yeah, of course. Now you mentioned like you'd watch Phil Taylor on the television. What did it feel like when you played darts for the first time on live television? It was very... Very overwhelming, you know. I get there, you're taking pictures of the stage, you're taking, we're watching the crowd, mm. and uh, it was my world championships. I was, I, I was so nervous, uh, but I just got up there to try to enjoy it, and you don't enjoy it, it, it is nerve wracking. Yeah, I can imagine. And, you know, it was an experience, and it was the start of the ladder, mm. and I worked my way up then, and, you know, and playing a lot on TV now, you get used to it. Gary used to be called Dream, I think you told me this little secret, he used to be called Dream Boy. Any embarrassing nicknames that you're going to expose for yourself, or are you just exposing in Gary? No, <laughs> just Gary. <laughs> no, I never, I never had many nicknames. None uh, of them? No. Surely uh, there was one. Not with the darts, no. You know, oh. you had them when you were in school, oh, yeah. but we all had them then, but no. You, you can do everything with being a diamond, you yeah. know what I mean? Like the walk on girls when we used to have them. You used to hold a proper diamond, like a, well not a proper diamond, a, a glass mm. diamond and yeah. before they come on and you know, we could, we could do everything with it. had sparkles on me, yeah. um, shirt, you know, we've done all that and you just keep moving to different different ways with the diamond, yeah. it's good. Talk to us about your walk on music, where yeah. did that inspiration come from? Play that funky music, White Boy, uh, Wild Cherry, it's, it's a good old song um, and it came from when I used to play county and I think a lot of the dark players got him when mm. he used to play county. Um, and one of the lads just played it for me. Um, we said, well, we'll stick with that. I was going to do Diamonds Are Forever. Oh. But it, we did try it yeah. when, when I first started. But That's a good we, one, that, Yeah, but we just couldn't. It's not a dance. It's nothing that people can sing to. Of course you, know, you can sing no, to that. No, you can't. You can sing no. that. I'll sing to it. Sing to it. Go on. Oh, no. Diamonds Are Forever. <laughs> but it's not a catchy song. Do you know? You need a dance song yeah, or something. You. you know what I mean? Um, we, did, we did try it, but... It just didn't work. What about Shine Bright Like a Diamond? That was another one, but it came in later, didn't <laughs> <Yeah>. it? <laughs> so, but everyone did say to me, change my music and go Shine Bright Like a Diamond. But um, no, we stuck with the play that funky music, White Boy. Now, what has been the best moment of your career so far? Winning the tournament. Yeah. I think winning the Pro Tour tournament, a European one. I had a, a month where I won two European tours. Wow. I beat Michael Van Gerwen in Holland. Uh, and then I beat Peter Wright in Germany. And then, you know, they, they, were, they were good events to win. But I think getting to the quarterfinals of the World Championships is a good one. Yeah. You have a load of ups and downs. You know, the, the downers, you know, you, 
when you don't win or you go into a bad patch, you know, and we all do it. But James Wade told us um, you want a chicken or a hamper once. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> A what chicken. it was, what it was, we were, we were away, away one time and we were looking um, on Dart's database, it used to be called, and mm. um, it showed you all the titles that you'd won. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at Phil Taylor's and it was like 16 time champion and win this, win that. And then a me and Adrian Lewis were sat there and he was going through it and he said, what have you got here? I said, I don't know. So he <laughs> said, let's have a look and he put it on and it was a, it was a Christmas handicap uh, Pick green knockout or something. What is that? And it was just a local league. It was oh, just a local okay. one. And, and why it was put on there, I don't know. Yeah. And it just said Christmas knockout winner. And I was like, what's that doing on there? And Adrian said, oh, what did you win? A turkey. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a turkey, not a chicken. <laughs> so, was yeah. like... so that's what they kept saying, oh, he wins a, a turkey. We've all won money and he wins a turkey. <laughs> oh, at least you had Christmas dinner sorted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was it. But no, I didn't win anything. I, w I won a few pounds, but not. Yeah. So when you're not playing darts or training, what do you like to do in your spare time? Well, what do the rest of them do? They what said do fishing. Yeah, that's what oh, was I that do. you as well? Yeah, is, that like, yeah. is that the main thing then? I think what it is with fishing, you can get away. Hmm. You know, you can go on your own and just chill uh, and enjoy it. And, hmm. You know, enjoy the day and the sunshine or whatever. As you can see, I just burnt my head a bit <laughs> in the last few weeks. But um, yeah, it's a relaxing one for the lot of us. And we, and we all sit together. So James, Gary, yeah, you know, yeah. we all sit. Adrian Lewis is another one. You know, we all sit and fish. You know, we, sometimes we'll meet up yeah. and go fishing. But yeah, it's just what we enjoy doing. Now, if you wasn't a professional darts player, what would you be? Well, when I left school, we were on the YTS games at the time. Mm. And I wanted to be a bit layer then. I wanted to work on the railway. I want, and... I ended up working in a factory, worked 12 hour shifts, nights and days and everything. You never take the path of what you want to be, you know, it's, it's always something else comes in and you end up going on a different route. I, I end up being a dart player and it's <laughs> like, you would never have thought of that when I was in school. Yeah. But then when I look back, I had uh, you, you set, you're in English and maths, we had 10 sets where I was from. And in English, I was in set nine, so that was the worst. Oh, wow. But in maths, I was in set two oh. out of 10. So when you look back, you think, oh, you were good at maths. Yeah. You know, so it's, uh, and does that help with your darts as well then? Well, algebra with... didn't, did it? You oh, know? Yeah. <laughs> who who <laughs> actually yeah. uses algebra, to be <laughs> exactly. fair? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But no, I think with the maths and the, you know, the adding up and everything, it's, it does help. Yeah. Now, what do you think James, Gary and Callum would be doing if they weren't pro players? I think Gary would be doing what he used to do. I think he used to make fires, you know, uh, marble fires and stuff like that. Wadey, I think he'd, he'd just be with him cars because mm. that's what he enjoys doing yeah and Callum I think he'd be a BMX rider oh nice because that's what that's he does. pretty cool that's what he does is he's, it? he's good at that Dangerous, yeah he's isn't it? very good yeah what, what would you say um is the best thing about being a, a darts pro the the job itself is good mm. the traveling you know being with the lads we have a bit of fun you know like with Gary Ma Michael Smith another one. one one of the pro tours me and Gary just got these chilli sweets Chili sweets? Yeah, because everyone keeps pinching your sweets on the table. Oh, we all right. take sweets in and stuff like Yeah. Uh, and we put chili sweets down. So every time the they come back and pinch them, they were like, oh, it's too hard. <laughs> yeah, we were just laughing, me and Gary. And what would you say the worst thing is, if there is anything? Probably getting up at four or three in the morning, go, oh. you know, to come catch your flights. Oh, you yeah. Know oh, I was going to say, what are you working like at? Four you know, in the now I'm going to go back now, get in about nine o'clock tonight, and then mm. I'm up at six because I've got to go to another tournament. Oof. So, but. It's a good job and it's a yeah. good paid job. Now, what's your pre-match routine? I listen to me music and I just have a little iPod. You know, everyone's got these uh, phones and all that. Oh yeah. my gosh, they're going to be gone soon. I love my iPod. I know, yeah, I've got yeah. mine, my little mini one. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I use that and I've just got loads of music on there from heavy metal down to Elvis to well, all kinds of Madonna, yeah. Girls Aloud, everything's on there, you know, but it's all old music and I love it. Who would you say your favourite artist is or your favourite type of songs? I think, I Gary. think Gary said like the 80s, I think he said yeah, that. Yeah, well, what you we were all, you know, we're all born the same area, weren't we? So mm. it, mine, mine's in the 80s, mine's Bon Jovi and I, yeah. you know, I, lo I love Bon Jovi, I love Guns N' Roses and stuff like that, that's my type of music. Mm. Thank you so much for your time, thank you for joining us on Unicorn Darts, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know the man in front of the board. Mm. I've been Pippa Monique and this has been the For Every Player series. Season.